Hey, hey, it is Zenial Gamer here today to show you guys my Spiritual Realm B10 team. So guys, uh, you can already see the team. It is going to be Verd, Double Rauk, Seek, and A-Star. Now, obviously the dungeon's only been out for a day. I am sure that there are going to be better optimized teams over time, but this is so far been 100% for me. And it's been averaging about 35, 36, 38 seconds right in there. So it's actually a little bit faster than like the DB12 Tricaru team was. The overall runes that I have on this team are relatively high quality. I don't know how much that matters. Again, this dungeon's only been out for a day. So in terms of what I've tested running off of this basic core, I've tried several things without the seek. The one that was the most promising was double A-star. So it was Vertiheil, double Ralph, double A-star. That seemed to get more consistent runs under 30 seconds, but because of the randomness of the boss not always getting crit on, it would also have runs that extended out over a minute. I didn't see it fail in the 20 or 30 run runs I tested it on, but the overall average was slower because of those occasional one minute runs. I have tested this with uh, triple uh, triple Rauk instead of both the A-Star and instead of the Steek and instead of the Vertihile. So I've tried a lot of different variations with Triple Rauk. At the end of the day, the uh, combination of the attack buff and the crit buff from the Seek just fits this team really well and it helps you clear the waves a lot faster. Um, I've tried it, pretty much everything I've tried without the Vertihile will get runs that go out over a minute when you don't crit the final boss enough because she does gain attack bar. Uh, when you don't crit her as well. So the Vertiheil feels kind of necessary. Everything I've tried without the Seek, same issue. We'll have runs that go out a minute or longer. Now, with that said, Seek himself, not necessarily the only crit rate buffer that we could use. On stream, I initially was trying Fire Chun-Li, but Seek has a couple of really nice advantages. He has a very low cooldown on his buff, which means that the routes will cycle him back, so it's there every wave. He actually has decent multipliers. For being a freaking two-star monster, he can hit pretty hard. And the fact that he gives you the crit and the attack buff combination is really nice, because most crit rate buffers don't do that. So overall, he did seem to be the best fit. Now there's a couple of others that I haven't tested yet. Maybe one of them will be in the final team. Maybe the final team will be something like true damage where we don't worry about getting that crit rate up. So I think there's a lot of testing left that can be done, but this is the team that we're gonna open with for now. Now, as far as other things I've seen people use, I've seen people using Kali for like speed and attack buff. I think they're running faster teams and trying to cycle the boss a little bit more. Uh, what I will say is this boss doesn't have to be crit on because the B10s do have slightly lower stats and this boss has some of the lower stats of all the dungeons. I don't think dealing with the anti-crit of the boss is mandatory, but of the testing that I've done so far, it's yielded the best results in terms of average time. So with that said, let's go ahead and take a look at the builds. Okay, so the Vertihile that I'm using is my old Tricaru Vertihile. You'll notice that he's got 100 crit rate. Keep in mind, this is a wind boss, so you actually only need 85 crit rate. And technically, we're assuming that we're gonna have crit rate buffs. So you could technically try and build them to 55 crit rate. I think that's a little bit risky because Seek does not have perfect AI, plus he won't always get a team up. So even when his AI would trigger, he may just not have the uh, crit buff available. But I think that this boss is maybe a little less important to get that perfect 100 crit rate or 100 effective crit rate, meaning for a fire unit 85. I think you could get away with, like if you had a crazy high damage build that was only 83 crit rate, I think you'd be fine with using that. But for right now, we're just using my old DB uh, Vertihile. The only change that we made, um, actually we didn't switch the damage to wind. I thought I did. I guess there is no change, but if you look at this artifact, um, we're still getting 11% co-op damage and then um, crit damage as the enemy is less. And then on this side, it's co-op damage again. Most of these units are gonna be on some mixture of damage on wind, co-op damage, uh, crit damage, and additional damage by attack. Those are the main things that you're looking for here. Now the monster that's actu actually acting first on this team is Seek. I want to point out the Seek is here at 170 speed. So this is a great time to go show you guys what the boss's stats actually look like. So a huge shout out to Swore Farm for already having the data mine stats. This is extremely helpful when you're trying to figure out, for example, how much accuracy you need. 
And so if we look on this page, one thing you'll notice here is that the mid boss is 164, but the golems are 169. That is combat speed. So that's speed after speed leads and after towers. However, the boss is 177. That makes this boss the fastest boss out of every dungeon because Punisher's is 175. Now I say fastest, uh, the Abyssal dungeons are probably faster um, and Punisher's does accelerate, but it has the fastest starting speed out of all the old dungeons excluding Abyssal. Now, before I jump back over to the runes, I also just want to point out the boss's, um, boss's resistance right here is only 15. And since you can never bring a monster below 15, that means the boss effectively has no resistance. Now, in the waves coming into that, everything else is 50. So that's going to be relevant when we decide how important accuracy is. And what I've pretty much decided is I wanted one route, uh, which is the one that's acting second to have enough accuracy to offset the mid-boss's resistance, but that I'm not as worried about accuracy on the rest because the waves are pretty much getting cleared no matter what. And I would rather have as much damage as I can for the boss instead of trying to get through the waves uh, more quickly. So now looking back at our builds, this Seek is at 170 speed. And if we factor in a 28% speed lead, which is going to round up to 30, and then 15% speed tower is going to round up to 17 because of his 110, his high base, we're actually at well over 205 tick speed. Now, he can be, um, he's not quite at the 239 tick, but he's well over the 205 tick. For those of you who are not familiar with ticks, I'm going to put a link up to an old, old video I did on uh, speed tuning. Probably needs to be updated, but at the end of that video, I do explain what ticks are. For the purposes of this team, I don't know how much it actually matters. I settled on 205 because with my runes, I generally don't lose that many stats. Whether the build is plus 60 or plus 20, like I don't really get that much stronger of a build. And so I figured because we are using the Vertihile and trying to cycle 205 was a good place to start. Now you'll also notice that my Seek has a crap ton of HP. He has a 6k base HP. Does he need this much? I have no idea, guys. I have no idea. I just kind of went with the idea that I wanted them all to have around 20k HP and I shot for 1k defense. I mean, Seek's base stats, he's a two star, so they're really low. Um, but I just basically kept up with the idea that, you know, sometimes Seek is going to derp on the boss and the boss is going to get a bunch of attacks out. So I wanted to make sure that stuff didn't die. Maybe they don't need to be this tanky. I honestly don't know, but this is just kind of what I settled on. You'll also notice that the Seek is on violent runes and that is just kind of derp protection. So if he derps on his S2, then you've got a chance to bio proc. That theoretically could slow the rundown because Seek is acting first on your team. So there's no defense break. So if he does proc, like if he does his S3 and gives you the buffs and then he procs and does damage, then it's a wasted second while he's hitting something. But I think if we're looking at this in the scale of doing thousands and thousands of runs, I would rather have a wasted second on occasion than waste 10 seconds when he derps and the proc allows him to go into his S3. Okay, so now we're gonna look at the first route to act. And you'll notice this one's got a shield set. I don't think the shield set is necessary for protection. I put the shield set in because uh, the, you gain back critical rate against this boss with each additional buff that you have. So I could have used will runes as well, but the shield set was just like a cheap way to put one buff on everybody on the team gives you an extra 5% crit rate. And then it does absorb a little bit of damage if you get hit somewhere. For the most part, I don't think it's necessary to absorb the damage. I think it's just necessary that it is um, giving me that extra buff. Um, all the monsters on this team, except the Vertihile, are on Vio. And the reason for that, again, it's cycling and dirt protection. Because we know that this is not a perfect AI team, uh, it's kind of back to the old, old days before uh, Tricart, honestly, where you would want the majority of your dungeon monsters on Vio, which would help to offset the fact that AI is not perfect. You'll notice I've only got six accuracy on this Rauk. However, I did put a 21 accuracy S1 artifact here. So he's actually got 30 accuracy, but he's actually got 40 accuracy because this Rauk is on an accuracy set. And this is actually the Rauk that's acting first. So this Rauk, which has zero accuracy plus 10 from the set, so actually 10 accuracy, this Rauk is acting first. And the reason I care less about his accuracy is because Rauk does have perfect AI, which means that he will team up whenever it is available. And the Rauks you will notice right here, they cannot defense break on their team up. What they defense break is with the S1. 
So the route that initiates the team up is not the one that can defense break, the route that goes with him is. And that means that when this route acting first goes with a team up, the second route, who does have um, over 35 accuracy, will be the one that has the chance to defense break. Now when the other route goes, and this route is the one that's being teamed up with, he's got a lower chance to defense break, but for the most part, I'm mainly concerned with the boss getting defense broken. The waves before and the mid boss, they just die either way. Because the vertihile's in there, you cycle in front, you never get hit. So if I do miss a defense break, it slows the run down by a few seconds, but it doesn't change like the safety of the run or anything. And so I opted to go with maximum damage, trying to kill the boss as fast as I could, as consistently as I could, as opposed to trying to clear the waves faster. So maybe there's a second or two to be saved in the team with some further optimization of the builds. Now the last thing I want to point out on this route build is that he is skilled up. So this is something that's actually pretty important. The S2, really it's nice to have it skilled up, it's not necessary, but the S1 has activation rate. So if we actually look at the Ralph's S1, you'll see a 10% harmful effect rate right here. That matters because he's only got a 70% activation rate to begin with. So this brings it up to 80. That is significant because landing those defense breaks are going to be the key to getting the faster runs. And again, 15% of the time you're going to get resisted automatically, but that extra 10% of the time where you don't even activate that kind of hurts. Okay, now the third monster that we're running is A-Star. So I have tried two different A-Stars and I don't honestly notice a big difference between them. Now they're both really high damage, but one of them is my old Necro A-Star, which we'll look at in a moment. And then one is a Rage A-Star that I put out. The thing is, uh, the Necro A-Star is built in Vampire and that damage is not making really any noticeable difference in how quickly the boss dies, but the vampire is also not making any noticeable difference in how quickly the boss dies, which tells me that if you don't have a monster rage set to spare, you can use a weaker rage set and it's probably not going to make a big difference. But this is the build on the A-Star, the rage build, and then artifacts again, damage on wind. In this case, I think I ran out of good co-op damage artifacts because I was testing so many different things, so I just gave her additional damage by attack. The additional by attack is actually really nice on uh, this this boss because you're not always going to get the crits, right? But that's just pure damage. As a matter of fact, I suspect that as we're doing testing later on, we may actually find out that additional by attack could wind up being pretty significant. So if you think about it like this, I've got a uh, little over 3,000 attack with towers and everything. Throw an attack buff, I'm at 4,500. 13% of attack, that means that with every hit, I'm getting an extra 500 plus true damage from this artifact, even when I don't crit. And of course, a star hits three times, so that's an extra 1500 damage. That's a, that's a pretty significant amount uh, when compared to the amount that she's doing per hit, especially when a defense break hasn't landed. And then just for comparison purposes, this is the Vampire A-Star. So the attack is actually a little bit higher than the Rage build, but it's 50 less crit damage. And again, I haven't really noticed a major difference. She does have better artifacts though, the 23 co-op damage. Um, but I, again, I haven't really noticed a major difference in the average time between the two. I haven't like gone down and tracked it, but it feels like both of them average 36, 37 seconds overall. Uh, so I don't know how important it is that the A-Star, you know, I may be overkilling. That's pretty much the point I'm trying to make here is these builds may be overkill. But with that said, this is definitely something that'll get you up and running a stable, reasonably fast team that gives you a chance to get some of those early seal runes farmed. So on that note, guys, as always, I appreciate you watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. Please remember to like and subscribe and we'll catch you on the next one.